Hey guys, welcome to Unarmed Projects podcast. This week we have Matt Kelly again. He's the creator of Dragon Quest RPG for StarCraft II. Before we start, like I said earlier, you can follow us on Twitter at our Unarmed Projects. You can follow me on Twitter at um, Tyler Wing Koo. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel uh, below. And um, so, Matt, introduce yourself again. Hi right, guys, my name is Matt Kelly. Uh, some of you know me as Hero. Uh, StarCraft 2, creator of Dragon Quest RPG, um, also known as DJ Beast, or uh, the leader of TFO, any one of those, that's me. Alright, cool, cool. So, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about his RPG game within StarCraft 2. I played a little bit of it uh, for this podcast, and then I usually play StarCraft 2 by more like the uh, regular multiplayer. But, so let's start with, um, what gave you the idea of creating Dragon Quest like this uh, little mod game on the multiplayer. Well, I was I was chilling and I was super bored one day and I was looking for a good RPG to play. And I noticed that on StarCraft 2, nothing on there is good. And if there was a good game, I noticed too that all your stats wouldn't save, which is a which is a big problem for an RPG considering if you have to restart your character every other time. That's not that fun. So what I decided to do, I uh, went on YouTube and I looked up some uh, tutorial videos for the editor, and then I just I just dove right into it, and then uh, I started the beta uh, about a year ago, and it did really good. So I just went from there. Yeah. So um, for people who don't know what it is, um, I think you have what thirty thousand people playing it right now. Uh, there's quite a lot. Uh, the exact number is kind of hard, but I know about uh, 4,000 people have favorited it, yeah. and that's just, just favorited. That doesn't mean they uh, that's played. So I'm sure it's uh, it's about in the 30s, 30,000 range. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So for people who don't, like I said earlier, who who don't know what it is, um, give them like a little like brief summary so they can check it out. You know, if if it uh, if the game is kind of to their liking. All right. So basically, uh, it's an RPG, like I said. Uh, it's sort of in the in the realm of like a Diablo, Diablo two style game, uh, where each uh, game has about four people in it, and then you get in a party. Uh, you have your own dragon. Uh, there's of course uh, bosses and different enemies and places you can go in. They each have their different levels. And then also, uh, you could level up your guy, and each level you get uh, to choose some talent to put in your character, uh, a skill, and then you get to choose five stats, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, uh, I, I loaded it up the other day, um, and the dragons are um, Zergling, and, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is kind of ironic, because uh, I was not expecting that, but... Uh, why choose Zerglings as your motto, not like a Hydralisk or a uh, other type of uh, uh, unit? Uh, well, that's another aspect of the game uh, is evolution. So you start off as a baby dragon, and then you work your way up to uh, an adult dragon. Uh, actually, a legendary dragon is the highest form. And uh, I won't ruin what it is for all the new people, but I can tell you that the uh, adult dragon is actually an ultralist. <laughs> yes. Um, now, besides regular attack like Diablo has, you you also put in skill shots, which um, you can choose which ones you want to use, correct? Absolutely. Each uh, each dragon at each evolution uh, has about three different skills, and uh, they are cumulative. So a legendary dragon has all the skills from every other thing, and then some. So that's really cool. You can level them up, <clears throat> level them up, and get whatever kind of skills you see fit. Um, and then you could also build your character differently depending on you know what you want. If you want to be uh, right up there and melee people. You want to kill some people from the range, or you can even do like a mage class. It's yeah. obviously there's no limit on the skills you choose. You can go anyway. Yeah, because with me, um, when I play, I usually do a. Uh, I'm usually the tank, so I'll build buffs up stats and uh, melee, so I'm up close and personal for yeah. defense, and that's what I did with this. And uh, 
I still got owned at the beginning by the uh, level uh, one sheep <laughs> or ghosts. Or, <laughs> and it's pretty funny because, like, it's, it's great how you mapped it out where um, it's invisible for the most part. But when you get to that borderline on the map, it uh, shows, like, level 10, you don't want to go there just yet kind of thing, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, I I wanted to make sure that uh, the new players didn't get raffle stomped right at the start and rage quit. You know, I I wanted uh, I actually changed it uh, about two patches ago, so the sheep won't uh, auto attack you anymore. You actually have to engage combat with them first. Yeah, um, that, that goes just for the first little area because I I didn't want uh. I wanted it to kind of be like a tutorial area, not really that serious. That's why you're killing sheep, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I changed that. That's cool. Now, um, because you said, I mean, you made this multiplayer for StarCraft, why not, like, a tower defense? Why not, like, a Nexus uh, fight for a multiplayer kind of base? Or, like, a Dota kind of remake? <laughs> it's funny that you say that. Uh, the first... Uh, time I ever opened up the editor and actually made something, um, I made a, uh, I made a tower defense, actually, and it was called, um, Afterlife Tower Defense, and it was, it was basically you're killing ghosts and zombies and stuff, um, but, it, you know, I never actually, uh, released it. Yeah. It, w- it was all the way done through 50 levels, it was actually, uh, pretty fun, um, but the amount of uh, creativity and the the amount of fun that that's going to give you is a lot smaller to me, at least, than a uh, RPG. Because with an RPG, you are the character. You you could pick exactly what skills, what armor, what weapon, what stats, everything you could choose. So it's it's a lot more uh, in depth. I yeah, guess. yeah. And the thing about your RPG is, uh, like you said, if you leave the game, it saves the stats for their, like another time. And unlike other RPGs where you start up a new game, you have to start over again, people are kind of deterred by that. And that's why they go to, like, a uh, tower defense, something quick and easy. Did you have that in mind when you were making this game for, like, your fan base that you would uh, let them, like, if they start up a new game, be, like, the same level? No, absolutely. That's the number one thing I wanted to happen. Uh, It was for your guy to be continuous. And actually, uh, as to my knowledge, I, Dragon Quest RPG is the only game where your character is safe. No other game has a character, a hero in game that's safe. Um, there, there are a few games that save like a, a level that you have, and you can unlock, you know, different uh, stuff like that. But as as far as actually having a, a hero. Um, in this case, save and follow you throughout the game. Uh, I, Dragon Quest RPG is the only game that does that. Yeah, that was imp- that's really good. Um, now, are you just going to keep updating the game with patches? Cause, uh, or are you going to create a, like another kind of RPG or like another type of game for StarCraft 2? All right, so right now uh, what I want to do... Um, I have a few things that I want to get done on Dragon RPG before I start up a new project. Um, a couple of those, just to run through them. Uh, I'm working on an after uh, after game sort of level, something to do after you beat it. Because uh, right now, as soon as you get to level 100, you can prestige, and then you start at level 1, you just have bonus stats, and you can do that up to 10 times. Yeah. Um, so I want to make an area where even... If you prestige ten times, you're still gonna have trouble. Yeah, uh, yeah. And like, I, I, I also wanted to make an area that that scales along with you. Um, so what it's gonna be, it's kind of gonna be like a giant uh tournament kind of thing, a giant coliseum. So like you'll have to fight uh different waves of enemies that'll keep coming at you. And like uh like like a horde more a uh, horde mode. Sorry. Ex- exactly. So exactly like that. All right, that sounds good. And um. Now, StarCraft II's um, expansion um, is coming out, the Zerg story. Um, now, when there's an expansion coming out, do you have to re-update the game, or is it just, like, uh, crosses over kind of thing? Um, that That's up to me, actually. Um, there's two ways I can go. I can keep it uh, the way it is, 
right now, and everybody will be able to play it, whether they have the expansion or not. Um, but of course, I won't be able to get any of that new content, any of those new uh, characters, if there is any. Yeah. Uh, if I do decide to update the map and use the new uh, expansion in my map, then of course, everybody without the expansion will not be able to play it. And uh, I don't want to, I'm kind of torn. You know, I don't want to um, single out and cancel out part of my my fan base like that. But I also think that the game would be much better with more units. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, that kind of answers. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. Um, now, we're going to stream off topic a little bit. Uh, like you said, you're, you're a DJ and uh, you're yeah. a composer and stuff. And you actually did the uh, intro uh, song and the uh, announcement uh, for Vince, uh, the podcast with Vince. Um, is there any uh, projects for you coming up music-wise that you want to do? Um, I'm working, I just actually finished uh, this really slow, um, it's called Ambient House. Uh, it's kind of a mixture between um, like mellow ambient music that just kind of flows with you. And then uh, some actual, like, beats and stuff to get, you know, get your head bobbing. So th- that's really cool. Um, I really want to do uh, a collaboration uh, with someone from Tase Fullerton. Uh, he's a composer, too. Uh, his name is Michael. I uh, want to do a little uh, thing with him. Um, if some of you know uh, Tonic, uh, Tonic, I know uh, personally one of his singers. Her name is uh, Dai. Die420 is her SoundCloud if you guys want to go check her out. Um, I'm going to do a collaboration with her. Um, I want to also do a collaboration with uh, DJ Meow Mix. Um, yeah, so th- that's kind of where I'm going. You know, just I kind of I really like the idea of collaborating with somebody and seeing what we can come up with. Sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, so, games, you know, StarCraft 2, like what? got you into the making of games such as Dragon Quest, like your inspirations for that? Um, well, I, I started making games uh, when I was, I want to say eight. Uh, my friend just got the first StarCraft, and he showed me the editor, and, you know, I, I always knew I wanted to do something with gaming. Um, I'm actually a computer science major, so I'm going to be making games for the rest of my life. Um, but when I was eight and I saw this editor, uh, I actually, we got together and I made this little game where each of my friends at the time were characters and you could, you could play as whatever one of those characters you want. So like I could play as myself and I had superpowers and stuff. So that was really fun to do, you know, and I guess it just kind of went from there. Uh, I got Warcraft three. I made some stuff on that. I've never actually released anything on Warcraft three officially though. And then uh, StarCraft 2 came out, and uh, just legend from there. Yeah, yeah. Now, going back to the Dragon Quest, how how did you um, make the experience? Because, like, and, and at the beginning, the experience is very low kind of thing, and until you fight, like, higher level. Um, what, what, what is some of the uh, stats that you put for experience kind of thing? Um... All right, so what I did, I have a giant Excel uh, spreadsheet, and it, it has a bunch of different formulas that I made, a bunch of different uh, things, and it basically it calculates um, how many hits it's going to take to kill that enemy on average, um, how many hits it's going to take for that enemy to kill you, and then it, it finds out the difficulty of that enemy, and then it awards experience uh, based on that. Um, and then, of course, I have to set that all uh, one by one. I have to have to do that. So it's not it's not easy. And of course, I had to come up with the formulas myself, which wasn't easy. Um, but the game's always open to fine tuning and adding new characters. Um, so at the start, I'm thinking about giving the player um, something something cool to start with. Because um, right right now you you basically start you start from scratch almost you you start with the bare minimum dragon you do get one skill point so you could put a skill you get some stat points and you get a talent point for your starting level um, but I want to I want to kind of give the player uh, something 
something cool to start with, uh, something a little bit exciting, and then maybe you just can't use it after a level ten or, or something like that. I, I haven't decided. Yeah. Um, but something something around that range. Yeah, like for for people who don't know, like how hard it is to code. Uh, gaming, because I actually got to watch you code a little bit, and I was still confused. That's why I'm not a computer science major. Um, the time it takes to put into coding and like the certain things, like uh, for people who want to start up trying to make games like you, uh, what are some like tips for uh, them? Uh, I would, if if possible, if at all possible, go get the Starcraft, go get Starcraft One, open up that editor. And just make something stupid. Just just work around with it. Um, there's like millions and billions of tutorials on YouTube of the StarCraft One editor. Um, make something stupid, and then and then maybe move on to StarCraft Two. Um, the problem the problem with StarCraft Two is it, it's so um, convoluted. It, it's very it's almost too much. Um, even for me, a lot of the stuff. Um, I, I have no idea what's going on half the time. It kind of just takes you wherever it wants to. Uh, we had this one glitch that w- it was bothering the game since, like, version 1. Um, and that's where people with low shaders could not see the dragon, the baby dragon, when they started. So they'd start the game in, and they'd be completely dragonless, completely <laughs> screwed, and not able to do anything. And I, I come to find out that it's a StarCraft II bug. So um, what I, I did... I, I took me till patch 1.101 is when we finally got it fixed. And what I did, um, I made a workaround that checked the shader level. And then it actually, it makes your computer uh, put the shaders for that character only at high. Um, so so actually, even if you pick sh- low shaders, your dragon's going to be high shader. Whether <laughs> you like it or not, because uh, that way you can actually see it. Which which is crazy, just absolutely crazy. So if you want to make a game on StarCraft Two, you you really need to. Um, I would start with something easy. Don't do an RPG right off the bat. That's going to be too complicated. Start with a tower defense. Uh, maybe start with uh, you know like a marine game, where it just keeps spawning units and then you can kill other units. Something like that. Something something really simple. Get started on that first, and then work your way up to whatever kind of game you want to build. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Now, for most people who uh, want to make games, um, do you yourself um, have a laptop or computer that can handle the graphics? Because, like, I know for people with PC that they're they're tired of updating. You know, I think it's like every four years. Um, so, do you believe that people who want to start up need to have a high spec uh, laptop or PC, or should they just run a low based one until they get the hang of it? Um, that's actually a really good question. Um, uh, I, when I first started making stuff on StarCraft 2, um, I believe my computer is pretty, pretty decent. Um, I have an i7 in it, and I had, you know, a, a decent graphics card, some really nice stuff. Um, but th- that's, that's kind of overkill for editing. Um, the problem is going to be when you test. Now, if you're, if you're making a game, and you notice that, not even you can play it, um, it's probably not going to be that good of a game anyway uh, because all your people, all your fans, you know, everybody who's going to play your game probably is not going to be able to play it either. Um, so what I would recommend doing would be make a game that can be played on a crappy computer. Um, Dragon Quest RPG by no means needs to be played on a high-end computer. Um, there's very low enemies on screen um, most of the time. Uh, there's very low uh, effects going off, and of course, it, it works under low conditions. It, it's not something where you need to have it on high uh, to see all the stuff. Of course, it looks really pretty. I did a great job on all the terrain and stuff, but it, it's not no means necessary. It's all going to be um, just eye candy. It's all going to be extra, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, now moving on. Uh... Is there any other uh, games like StarCraft 2, like a Warcraft, if they make another one? Who knows? Because they're, they're stuck on that WoW thing right now. Uh, yeah. Is there any other uh, 
types of uh, games that you want to branch out onto their multiplayer and create another game because right now you're just on uh, StarCraft 2. Well, I, I, uh, I hope, I hope eventually they come out with, uh, Warcraft 4. Uh, that'd be pretty sweet. Blizzard, can you do that? Um, yeah, I, w- I would love to branch out and make some, some games on something else. Uh, I find myself in, in basically every game I play, I either A, host the guild, or B, make something. So it's, uh, you know, it just depends on what, uh, what I'm doing, but I'm sure if Warcraft 4 comes out, I'll be making something for that. Um, it's actually a lot easier to make a, a dragon style game on Warcraft uh, because uh, they have dragons. Yeah, yeah, they have the. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I don't know. Um, whatever I decide to do or come up with, uh, I'm totally willing to branch out to a different game. StarCraft 2 was just the best I had. Um, and, you know, it's done good for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, which leads me to the thing of, like, in the future, because right now you're still in college and doing your computer science major and stuff, um, do you plan to either start your own company that makes video games or, like, join a Blizzard or a Riot kind of in, in uh, atmosphere? Uh, well, I really I really want to work for Blizzard, um, mainly because it's, it's right there i i'm in cal state fullerton i live in uh placentia Arvine's right there for me so it's really close and i also really like what blizzard does most of the time um and then of course i grew up with diablo uh diablo 2 was one of my favorite games of all time starcraft warcraft um i never really got it in a while just because i saw it stealing all my friends souls in high school so i never <laughs> in that but uh but yeah, I want to. I want to work for them. That would be great. I'm hoping StarCraft uh, Two Dragon Quest RPG could, you know, kind of get my foot in the door with like a resume uh, booster. Um, but I would also be willing to work for, you know, any other company that I respect. Uh, I would hate to work for EA, for example, because <laughs> I think they're the Satan of the video game industry. Uh the EA has some good quality stuff. Sometimes they're they're, they're turning into they're, an Activision. They, Games are great. They just, uh, they're kind of like if Satan owned a company, you know? Like, their stuff would be good, but you'd feel guilty playing it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's pretty much it for the podcast. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Tyler Winku. You can follow Unarmed Projects at Twitter as well. And then you can subscribe. Uh, Matt is a good friend of mine, so I'm sure he'll be on the podcast again. Uh, We'll probably schedule another podcast for next week on something else. New topics every week, like I said. Um, That's pretty much it for now, guys. So once again, thanks again for listening to me and Matt. Uh, I'm sorry if my voice sounded kind of weird today. Uh, I came down with a cold and sore throat, so it's kind of iffy right now. All right, thanks, guys.